Hello, and welcome to round two of the Parenting Roundabout podcast. I'm Katherine Haleko, and I'm here with Terry Morrow. Say hi, Terry. Hello. So usually on this podcast, we talk about parenting issues, but once a week, Terry and I like to get together to discuss TV, movies, books, and other entertainment topics, because it's nice to talk about something other than parenting for a change. So this week, we will continue our regular weekly discussion of the West Wing mm-hmm. and revisit our new challenge round feature with a movie that I compelled Terry to watch. <laughs> But first, I have a book club book to discuss, and coincidentally, it upped its pop culture credentials this (laughs) week when its movie version was nominated for an Oscar for Best Foreign Film. Yeah, when you mentioned it, that we were going to talk about it this week, I had never heard of it before, and then all of a sudden, there it is on the list of Oscar nominations. Yeah. So. So the book is A Man Called... Now, here's where it gets complicated. It's spelled... O-V-E, but we determined at our book club, based on audiobook listeners, uh-huh. that it's pronounced Uva. Uva. A man called Uva. All righty. So it's Swedish. The author is Frederick Bachman, I believe is how you say his name. Okay. And yes, indeed, the movie version was nominated for an Oscar. And uh, um, nominated the, for two Oscars, best foreign oh, language really? film, and also I think hair and makeup. Oh yeah, hair which and makeup does not spring to mind as something <laughs> that that would be for. But was there a lot of is there a lot of flashbacks and historical stuff, or does somebody turn into a zombie at some point? <laughs> no zombies, but lots of flashbacks. Uh huh. Yes. That must have been it then. Yeah, the book opens and it's this 59-year-old man called Uva and he has just been laid off from his job and the first couple chapters are him kind of puttering around his house and he lives in sort of a townhouse development and he has appointed himself the chief Uh like enforcer and inspector of the place and Mm -hmm. He's very, very concerned about people following the rules. <laughs> and, and every morning at 5.45, he wakes up. And then at 6, he goes outside and, and does his rounds, he calls them. Uh-huh. And he's talking about his wife. And he kind of is, like, grumbling about her, you know, changing the temperature on the radiators and th- things like this. Um, and he is working on a a project in his house where he's installing a hook and you like a small ceiling thing. Okay. And so you, you're starting to learn that he's, you know, sort of this grumpy dude and he um, is very concerned about rule following and he's also very handy and good at fixing things and making things and and building things. As you're reading along, what is it you're thinking he's going to do with that hook? Well, you're not sure, um, <laughs> but then because he could veer in the in the direction of hair and makeup awards, yeah. But in in fact, yes. Then you finally learn. It, it finally becomes clear that yes, he's putting up this hook because he plans to hang himself. Ay ay ay. Um, and it, then it's like, oh, that took a turn. But <laughs> uh, and but then you also start to find out that his wife has died, mm. and. Um, I kind of saw that coming. Yeah, and then uh, it turns out that she was, you know, this wonderful, wonderful person, and she was the love of his life, and she, she was, you know, the without her, he just is completely adrift. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he, so he sets out to kill himself and he is meticulous about getting everything in order and you know putting down plastic so that when the when the paramedics come in they don't mess things up (laughs) with their muddy boots and (laughs) like all all this stuff um and then he actually does it you know he he puts the noose and everything and then the rope breaks oh. and so then it's all about how like can't anybody make a decent <laughs> rope anymore <laughs> um and then it goes on from there and he, he tries some other methods and everything it just doesn't happen either he changes his mind or something doesn't work uh, like he goes to throw himself in front of a train and he instead of doing it he actually saves the life of another guy who accidentally <laughs> fell in front of the train. <laughs> and okay. so it's, 
It's like this. And then he, he starts getting involved in the life of a family that moves in across the street from him. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's really charming how (laughs) this, this woman who's like eight months pregnant and she's Iranian, I believe. Mm -hmm. And she comes, she and her husband are, are backing their U-Haul basically into the little sidewalk area. And he, Uva gets all bent out of shape because, Uh you know, you're not supposed to put, bring a vehicle here. (laughs) And furthermore, why can't this useless person back up properly when towing a trailer? So against his will, he gets completely wrapped up in this family's, (laughs) in this family's life. Um, And there's two little girls and they basically fall in love with him and Aww. call him grandpa and he's just like wow I'm going to grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> and he ends up adopting this stray cat only because his wife loved cats i hate cats they're horrible yes. um but he, he um you know it's one of those hmm. you think he's a real grump but he actually he actually has a heart of gold yes and he has a very strong moral compass Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a lot of flashbacks to what his growing up was like and his sort of young adulthood and how he became the way he is and how he met his wife and Mm -hmm. their story so it it, so when you hear like oh it's a book about a man who keeps trying to kill himself and failing (laughs) then then you think like well I don't want to read that yeah but um it's actually very charming and it's mostly very funny and um like everyone else you end up really kind of falling for this character and wanting the best for him and wanting to find out what happens so sounds like it would be a good movie I can see how it yeah, lent itself yeah. to that. Yes. And like I said, there are there are flashbacks to him as a young man and his wife as a young person and um even his own father, uh, some of his father's childhood. So I can I well, can see how yeah. that would have to Did your book club like the book? Yes. Yes. Most people enjoyed it. A couple of people were like, I just couldn't with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> annoying me (laughs) he was bugging me but but yeah as a general rule um people liked it oh good is it is it very long it's not too long and it was a really quick read i Mm -hmm. found it's a lot of short chapters and um it went by pretty quickly is it a translation from the original language yes Ah. translated from swedish but yeah pretty charming Hmm. and we, I think, would all recommend it. Well, very good. Do you think you're going to try to see the movie? If it comes Maybe. If Netflix it, or a if it's, streaming right. venue near you? Yeah. Yeah, I'd be curious to, to check it out and see how it went. So often I don't see a movie until years after yeah. I've read the book. So it would be kind of fun to watch it closer to the to the actual time. Yeah, that's true. See how they do. Yeah. And will see, you be I rooting approve. for it on Oscar? It'll be something for you to root for. It will be something for me to root for because I do not know anything about any of the other ones. <laughs> we have we have very limited rooting interests, but we will seize them where we can. That's right. <laughs> That's what we will do. Yeah. I mean it's beyond that for the Oscars. Yeah. We, can, we could touch on yeah. briefly. I well, think as I mentioned to you, my main other interest would be um whether Lynn Manuel Miranda gets his EGOT. Yes. Yes, we'll be rooting for how far I'll go to win best original song. I certainly hope that he will get it. And uh if not, it's just going to be cute watching him go to the Oscars and getting all the tweeting about that. And it's really just a matter of time because yes. if he doesn't get it for this, he will get it for something else. He will. But it would be nice if he got it this time. So we will be rooting for that. But movie-wise, I don't know. Unless I manage to go see La La Land before the ceremony, which is mm-hmm. possible but not probable. Right. Yeah, and I've I've now seen Hidden Figures, That's which true. we talked about last week. Okay. And that's a best picture nominee and mm-hmm. I would love to be able to see La La Land. Yeah. Mostly because I do think it would be fun to see on a big screen. Right. So, that would be on my list. Yeah. La La Land. So that's <laughs> So that's your book. That's your book. What's the next book up for your book club? It's called The Postmistress. And how long has that been around? I feel like I've heard something about it. 
I've heard that title. It came out in 2010, mm -hmm. and it's set during World War II in Massachusetts, like a ah. small town in Massachusetts. Okay. So we'll see. It's the author is yeah. Sarah Blake. Okay. Well, some uh, podcast down the line, Catherine will give her a book review on that one. That's right. And for today, we will move to our TV yes. show of the week, which is <laughs> The West Wing. We watched the episode called Ellie yes. from season two, and then we listened to the West Wing Weekly podcast, mm -hmm. as we like to do. And I agree with Josh and Rishi that this was kind of a fun episode with yeah. some very comedic <laughs> pieces to it. <laughs> I mean, the stuff between... President Bartlett and his daughter Ellie oh, wow. was very poignant, yes. um, but there were these whole like sticky <laughs> <laughs> things about what time is it? So the president is going to leave Japan yeah. and get home an hour before he <laughs> left. That's a big story. So. Yeah, yeah, and it was it was good. I mean, it was it was a relatively minor episode, especially with the episodes we have coming up. It's mm -hmm. sort of like a nice last. Well, not the last enjoyable thing before things get really intense, but sort of a little interlude. A little pause. A little pause, yes. Although the scenes between the father and daughter are just, it's, it's, I felt the same way about those as I did about the Abby and Jed arguments, is that they were very lived in. You can just see the entire yes. history of that girl growing up in that house in that one conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I thought that, Absolutely. that was very good. I really liked that and I also as they mentioned on the podcast I like the scene between her and Charlie where you know it's the difference between being your your sister's boyfriend and being your father's aide he kind of flips from one to the other there yeah and just and the, he's trying very hard he is she's, he's she's not so helping him out too much no she wasn't he was so sweet but then boy once you hear Bartlett's voice coming down the hall you know the the temperature drops about 20 degrees uh -huh. But uh, that I always liked that. I had forgotten how much I liked this episode and how much I liked those scenes and the relationship between them. Because, I mean, you see, we've seen the relationship between him and Zoe, the youngest daughter. Right. A hundred times different than this, just completely. Uh -huh. uh, and so you can see why somebody might observe which one is their father's favorite. As much as he's going to protest it, it's hard. <laughs> You're mm -hmm. growing up in that household and seeing the different relationships. So I really liked Mary Kay Place in this also. I always liked to see her. And I thought she had a really good chemistry with everybody. Um, yes. It's yes. very, you know, you can see she was part of the campaign. She's obviously knows everybody and has an informal relationship with them. And I thought she did very well. Different levels of taking things seriously that were being said to her mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and then her observations about the family also right really insightful yes. and um she's able to see the, all the dynamics right. uh, as someone who's an outsider but also you know who's been around them all for yeah. so long yeah uh, able to really figure out what's been going on and articulate it yeah yeah, to the he, president and in such a way that he believes it, you know, he yes. realizes that she's right. Yeah, even at a time when he is being his most intimidating, mm -hmm. she's able to get that in. So, And what did you think of him deciding not to fire her? Yeah, I totally agree with what they said in the podcast that that makes no sense. If, if indeed what has been said previously is true. Now, it is also possible that Leo was just saying all of that stuff to expedite Right, or going along with it, you know, it's not it's not beyond him to paint a picture that may not be a hundred percent accurate. Mm -hmm. So we could just think that that he was just well. It's one of those where you could think maybe there's some fallout, but you know that's not important right now yeah. for plot purposes. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. I mean, it was a very plot. satisfying moment dramatically for him to do that, and it re it uh, kind of redeems him from some jerky behavior. <laughs> <laughs> been mm -hmm. going through, which is what we want to see. We want to believe that that down deep, he's always going to do the right thing. So from that, from a drama, dramatic point of view, it was good. From a realistic policy point of view, it makes no sense. Mm -hmm. And I also agree with the question of what the heck was Sam talking about when he was threatening the director? I have never 
known what that meant. And so I was mm. really interested to listen to the podcast to see if they would figure it out. Right. <laughs> and they had exactly the same problem. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Sorkin obviously had something in mind. Right. But, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Personally, between Sam and CJ, I'd be a little more afraid of CJ, but... Right, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) And that was great when Josh was sort of testing her on what was she going to say when the press said X or Y, and she was so ready with her excellent response. Yeah. It was nice, you know, because we've so many times seen her be caught off guard mm-hmm. or, you know, treated like she doesn't know what she's doing. Yeah. And in there, they showcased how very good she is at her job. Yes, yes that was very nice. Um, I also always love scenes with Toby and his ex-wife. They have a mm-hmm. very nice chemistry, and I like that actress. And that was really great. But it was another one of those where dramatically the little twist he does of picking up her strategy of just signing him up for something and using it against this guy who they can't get a no from. Right. Dramatically works out great. It's funny. His line to CJ, sure, I heard about it in your briefing tomorrow. It must be true. Right. But having, he, I mean, he just had what, an episode or two ago, he had a very rancorous meeting with this guy. I have trouble believing the guy is just going to oh, say, oh, it, well. Is it Ed, the guy yes. that was Ed Bagley yes. Jr.? Oh. I'm pretty I sure that's figure. who it was. So okay. I don't really see him saying, oh, well, you know what? They said it, and I really can't go back on it. I see him going and saying they're playing mm. games. This right. is the kind of games they're going to be playing and just making hay out of that. So, mm-hmm. okay, West Wing, we'll just <laughs> believe that that's going to work, but... Yeah, like that all seems... the other things that have gone down this episode. Maybe not. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes you have to let art wash over you. Yes, which we do say from time to time <laughs> while watching, while consuming this particular show. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> well, next time on West Wing, it's yeah. one that I believe is one of your favorites. Oh, Somebody's going to emergency. Somebody's going to jail yeah. and it's a big block of cheese it's episode. a big block of cheese to bring the comic relief but just basically well not to spoil but eh, i won't say anything because i don't okay. want to spoil it because <laughs> you don't really know how it's going to end until it takes a turn part way through ah, but okay uh, um yeah <laughs> it's, <laughs> okay. it's a it's a, a heavy freestanding episode rather than a heavy contributing to the forward moving Gotcha. plot of but it's still oh it's so good so well, i will look forward to watching and it also it. see if you can identify the callback to a sports night story they basically borrow a big chunk of story that got used in sports night and give it to a different mm-hmm. character mm-hmm. you okay. will recognize it it's within it's it's in the part that's before the credits i mean it's like in the opening little bit the frontal as they yeah. call it <laughs> you should weekly. recognize it a little chat between okay. sam and leo Something's going to sound real familiar. In Ellie, they have the line about... Yes. The only thing you had to do to make me happy was come home at the end of the day. That was in Sports Night, too, right? Who said that there? It was in Sports Night, and it just reminds me of Hamilton, too. Oh, yes. That's true. Oh, that was the end of the day. Yeah. That's Eliza right. sings that. Yeah. Casey says it to his son in Sports Night. Yes. Right. When, when the kid is lying about his athletic prowess. Right. Yeah, well, yeah, that's a good line. What do you want? Yeah. (laughs) It's called recycling. Yeah, you don't want to just use it once. It's it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yes. So that's two episodes of recycling in a row. (laughs) So that is the West Wing. And now I think we're going to move on to the challenge round. Yes. And it was my turn to challenge you last mm-hmm. week. So I suggested that we watch the movie Rushmore. Yes. Which is a Wes Anderson movie and one of the first ones of his that I ever saw uh-huh. um, and have remembered with fondness ever yeah. since. And have gone on to watch, you know, many, many others, things like Moonrise Kingdom mm-hmm. and the, what's the hotel one? Um Oh, yeah, Grand Budapest Hotel? Yes, Grand Budapest And how about Hotel. Royal Tenenbaums? Royal Tenenbaums. If I watched the... any of his movies all the way through, it might be that one. I remember watching large bits and pieces of many of his movies. I'm not 100% sure I've ever watched one all the way through until now. Mm-hmm. But that one I might have. I can't. I'm not sure. 
Right. But, but now, you've, now you've watched Now Rushmore. I have. And, and one what of the, did you think? One of the first. I, I enjoyed it. It wasn't, I mean, I've heard of this movie all along. I've read things about the movie. I knew basically what it was about. Mm-hmm. Um, this is my habit is I, 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 I read about popular culture rather than actually going and seeing it. Right. But I had thought it would be much more rivalry between the two characters all the way through. Okay. Jason Schwartzman and Bill Murray's character all the yeah, way through. And it really wasn't. There was just a one, one small part where they were really warring. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, his stuff, yeah. has he gotten more and more stylized as he's gone along? I mean, this is certainly stylized, but it seems less so than, say, Moonrise Kingdom. Yes, yes, I agree. And, and yeah. um, the Grand Budapest Hotel, they both are. It seemed, I mean, it's in, in no way naturalistic, no. but it seems more of a straightforward right. plot with the quirky characters and the particular kind of design of the scenery and of the costumes and all of that, but more or less a straightforward story. Yeah. And um, And I liked it. I thought it was really good. I thought um, I enjoyed it a lot. I particularly liked the little the little blonde kid following him around all the time. His like who starts out as his as his assistant, yes. and then they have a falling out, and then they reconnect later on. Yes, I thought that was adorable and very nicely done. And to ask a little kid to perform in that particular acting style that he likes is uh, that kid did an amazing job. I don't yes. know how old he actually was, but he was supposed to be pretty young. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was very good. And I, I liked the girl who's sort of the female version of him <laughs> that he meets at the high school later on. Yes, Margaret Yang. <laughs> yes, that was lovely. I enjoyed her a lot. And uh, she sort of claims him there at the end. Yeah. But uh, I thought it was very sweet. I always love Bill Murray in anything, and, and especially in Wes Anderson movies, I think. He, he just seems to fit in there very, very well. Yes, he is, and he's one of those Wes Anderson players. Yes, uh-huh. and I thought the character could have been very different just based on the description, you know, as a rich guy who falls for this teacher, but he was so vulnerable and so sweet. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you could tell how much he, he uh, likes this kid as opposed to his own children. And, uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> who are awful. You, you really can't stand it for good reason. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that part of it was really sweet too, that it was really about their friendship as much as it was about the woman. So, mm-hmm. um, I, I thought it was very good. It was, I, I liked it more than I thought I was going to actually, good. and found it to be a bad movie to do work in front of <laughs> because I had to keep stopping and watching it and looking at things. But, uh. Yeah. On the other hand, I watched it with my husband, who offered to watch it with me, which is not that oh. that usual that he would want to watch something like that. He said he wanted to check it out. And when it was done, he said, why do people watch this? So <laughs> I guess a thumbs up from me, <laughs> a thumbs down from the guy when you look up in the dictionary who would hate Wes Anderson movies, they have a picture of my husband. So indeed, he did not he care did for not it. not like it. <laughs> but he... He watched most of it. The other thing I like about this movie is the soundtrack. Yes. There's tons of fun incidental music and yes. then um, songs as well. They're, they're really great. And I would encourage you to check out the whole soundtrack on I Apple will. Music because yes. it has a lot of great tunes in it. Uh-huh. And I always enjoy that one. Yes. So delightful to listen to and also to look at. Just the the design of the thing is always, there's always something interesting on the screen. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. Even when it's a relatively quiet scene, just the way things are composed, the way people are standing Mm -hmm. and the scenery that's around them. It was very nice. I liked it. So I will try to seek out some more of his stuff and watch it like actually all the way through. Right. (laughs) The Grand Budapest Hotel is a lot of fun. Yeah. It's silly. It's even sillier. Yes. I mean, this one, this one was a little more serious than I yeah. remembered. I mean, it certainly has its silly parts uh-huh. um, and laugh out loud moments. But the Grand Budapest Hotel is almost entirely just like yeah, wackadoo. And yeah, this stuff, even when it was silly, it was sort of silliness in service of something. It was a, it was not silly to the characters. It right. Was, right. So exactly. Very good. Yeah. Well, thank you for making me watch that. I uh, I liked that a lot. Good. That was, uh, and I am going to now challenge you. Yeah. 
to our selection for next week. Okay. Uh, I don't know about you, but I am in the need of something that will make me feel good and happy. Something that is funny <laughs> and not, you know, one of these, one of these weeks, I'll warn you, I'm going to make you watch the last five years, but that is, I am not in the mood for a weepy right now. Okay. <laughs> I'm not in the mood for something that's reaching my chest and pull my heart out. So. <laughs> I can't imagine why not, but okay. <laughs> speaking of reaching into chests and pulling hearts out, uh, we will be watching the movie Return to Me, which is a movie from 2000, directed by Bonnie Hunt. And starring Minnie Driver. So oh, you've been watching okay. her in uh, Speechless. Speechless. Uh, Carol O'Connor plays her grandpa. And uh, David Duchovny is the um, love interest, which he isn't necessarily somebody you would think of as a romantic lead. But he is completely adorable in this mm-hmm. as just a lovely, well-intentioned guy. And I, have you heard anything about this movie? Do you remember anything about it? No. Okay. Well, I won't spoil for you what the twist is if you haven't heard what the twist is. But okay. if you haven't figured out, like, in the first 20 minutes, then... At, within the first 20 minutes, you will probably say, oh, yeah, I remember hearing about this. Okay. It's, I, I think it's pretty obvious. And it's really less a thing of the viewers figuring out what it is as it is, oh, I see. And then we watch the characters try to figure it out. Which, by the way, is sort of the opposite of A Man Called Uva. Ah. <laughs> You are doing the work of figuring, you know, part the the point yeah. of the book is, oh, I yeah. get why that's like yeah. that. Yeah. Well, in this case, the case of this movie, the IMDb page in the one sentence description of what the movie is about spoils it. So, Ooh, I mean, so spoils the, I will not go there. So don't go on the IMDb page or really probably look at the text on the box of the video. I don't think this is anything anybody tried to hide. Okay. So, um... It's sort of the the situation in the situation comedy, but uh, okay. anyway, it's it's very I enjoy it and I think it's very sweet and although there is a tragic event in it, it is in the end very happy and lots of great character actors in the background and um, lots of good performances and uh, I have been meaning to watch it again for quite a while and this will force me to do that as well as forcing you to watch it for the first time. I hope you enjoy it and that it uh, gives you a smile in tense times and everybody else uh, listening please watch it and then listen to what we say about it and uh, talk about it with us on our Facebook page. Yeah, absolutely. So for next week, then we'll watch that. We will mm-hmm. watch the West Wing episode that we mentioned called Somebody's Going to Emergency, Somebody's Going to Jail. Yeah. Um, and also we're going to have some Super Bowl commercials, I believe. Yes. Next yes, time. we will. Yes, we will. And also for us Hamilton fans, the uh, the original Schuyler sisters will be singing America the Beautiful. So we will be enjoying that. Yes. Lady Gaga halftime, maybe not so much, but. <laughs> right. So that will be taking place next Sunday, and yes. we will talk about it for next round two. Definitely. And that's going to be it for today's round two. Please subscribe to our Parenting Roundabout podcast so you won't miss any of our episodes, including our daily speed rounds and weekly group chats. As always, you can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. Bye, Terry. Bye, Catherine. Bye, everyone.